Well, good morning. Welcome back to A Country Boy Can Cook. It's early, early. Um, you can't see this, but it, it's about 15 to 6. I've been up since about 5, prepping some food. I am uh, going to cook. Let's see here. Let me get you a picture of this. Cooking pinto beans today. I sorted those beans out yesterday. I, I guess everybody knows what that means. Pour them out on a little plate or something and go through and make sure you get all the rocks and the old beans that don't look very good out of there. And I let mine soak for 24 hours. That gets you a head start of uh, where you want to be when you're cooking it. So I did this. I did that yesterday morning at about 7. So here I am today. Here I am today. <clears throat> And uh, you, can see this. you can see the beans have swollen up about twice their size. Here's one that's broken too. It won't hurt anything, but I'm going to take it out of there anyway. And then I know it's bright in here. I've got the lights on because it's so early. <coughs> Let me just reposition this camera. So you can see what I'm fixing to do here. So I'm six foot two, and I'm actually standing up for this recipe. It's early. I've got strength. Um, I'm going to pour these beans into a colander to rinse them. And I'm going to turn on my cold water. We'll let it run over for just a few minutes. And while that's cleaning though, I'm gonna get my first cup of coffee. Yeah, if I use a cure egg, some mornings I just wanna make one cup, other mornings more than one. You can see my old trucker bug here. It's like an old cafe cup. It's thick, it holds the heat in good. It's great for drinking coffee out of. So anyway, make sure they rinse really well. I'm gonna dump them in my pan one more time. Fill them up full of water. I don't know if you can see that or not. Oh yeah. So I just got cold water rinsing in them in the cold water. I think they call this a Jinwa or Chinese hat or something, I guess because of the shape of it. Works great for me because it's got a little holder that locks into the side of my sink here. Or sets on it anyway. And that's it, boys and girls. Another one split apart. I'll put these in my... I used to still use my mother's old aluminum pot. It was from the 50s. I looked it up one time, the brand, but I can't remember the brand. But the only thing I've done to it, I drilled a hole in it right here so I could hang it on a rack in my pantry. So I'm going to fill that up, fill about a couple of inches above the beans. Hope you can see that. you over to a different location these beans are going to be cooked on a different stove so let's see here 
I'll be right back with you. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. I'm going to turn another light on, get a little, little light on the subject. Maybe it won't wash everything out now. So I've got my pan of beans. I'm gonna put the burner on high. Let them start cooking. <laughs> and while that baby boy is cooking, I'm gonna come over here and put my meat. Let me get a knife, I'll be right back with you. other things here. I'm going to sit down for this. Oh, goodness. Goodness gracious. All right. There you go. And before I go any further, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. I'm right-handed, but uh, getting old has not been easy. About four years ago, I was doing something in my front flower bed, and uh, just back over here. I was doing something in my front flower bed, and I tripped and fell up against my house brick house on the corner and when I did I rolled after I hit the house I rolled under the back of my pickup all in one motion and I realized when I was laying there that my right hand was not moving very good and I knew I had broke my arm or elbow or something luckily my grandson was here my grandson Cody and uh I hollered enough at him that he could come around. We were doing some stuff in the backyard. And uh, he said, Papa, what you doing laying under the truck? I kind of lifted my right arm up with my left hand. And I said, I think I broke my elbow, Cody. I had a little scratch on my face where I'd hit the house. And on my forehead. Nah, it didn't hurt me. I'm hard-headed. So anyway, he went in and got my wife. She came out, and I was in a position I couldn't I couldn't push myself out because my right arm was broke under my truck. So they called the emergency uh, fire department. They came. We all laughed about it, and they said, "We understand you need some help." And I said, "Yeah, I, I do. I think I think I broke my arm, and when I did, I fell and I rolled under the back of my truck." They said, "Well, we'll get you out." So they slipped me on a backboard and pulled me out. And uh, I said, we'll get a gurney and put you on the gurney. I said, no, I can walk to the ambulance. But I knew it was broke. So I walked out there. And they got the gurney out. I laid down on it, and they put me in the back. First they did, and of course, they hooked me to an IV. I said, is your arm hurting? I said, not really. It's just kind of numb. And they said, well, we're going to give you something uh, just in case it starts hurting. And... Uh, so they gave me something, you know, they asked a little short history, did I have heart conditions? And I did. I, I, at that point in time, I knew I was in AFib, which I'd been in a long time. Uh, yeah, the coffee's great. And uh, they administered administer something, and I don't know what it was. And uh, the ride to the emergency room took about two minutes. I live about a mile from the hospital. Thank goodness. So my wife and my grandson followed, and we got up there, and of course they took took me in the emergency room, looked at it, and the, the doctor said, yeah, I think you broke it. And I said, y you think so? Uh, I mean, you can tell. He said, I think it's the elbow, which, which is not a good thing. So 
came back and he said, yeah, your elbow's broken about four places. Nobody here, you need surgery, but nobody here in this hospital can do this. Um, I said, well, no problem. I, I worked for a doctor and we had all good kinds of connections over in Plano. So I took in a, made an appointment with the doctor and uh, had to walk around in a sling and a, and a splint for about six months. I had to start taking some meds to get my heart strong enough to do surgery because they knew it was going to be a long surgery. Anyway, I made it. I made it through. And uh, I can't use it quite as good uh, up until just a couple of months ago. This has been three to four years ago. I couldn't even touch my face, but it, it, it's loosening up. Uh, it's functioning, and I'm right-handed, but I've always kind of been partial to my left arm, stronger than my left arm, so... Anyway, uh, I've got one bullion cube. This is chicken. I'm going to put it in my pot of beans. It's starting to boil. I've got pepper. Yeah, it's an old water bottle that I made. Use a lot of pepper in my cooking. So, a little bit of pepper. And I very seldom put salt in, especially at this point, because... I'm either putting smoked meat uh, today, a sausage. So it, it uh, I know it'll have, I know it'll have salt in it. This is Earl Campbell's smoked sausage. Or I don't know if you know who Earl Campbell was, but he used to be a football player, uh, retired of course now, and he's got a meat company. They make really good products. So I'm gonna slice off about half of this. And um, then I'm going to chunk it up into small pieces. And it's going into the pot. And the pot is already boiling over there. Uh, run away here. Get over here. It's funny, when we bought this house... Uh, 30 years ago. It had some old Formica countertops, which I hated. So I, uh, when I was redoing everything, I decided that I would go with granitized metal, like tin, except it's granitized. It's, you can see the little flakes in it. Let me put this uh, meat into the pot. in there and uh, it's it'll last forever I didn't want to ever change the countertops again I actually installed these I got a, a friend in, in Denton Texas had a metal shop they fabricated I, I, I took cardboard and made the countertop out of cardboard took that to them and they reproduced that and it, I brought it in and it's it fit just like a glove not OJ's glove but a glove a, a glove that really fit so um, that's what, if you're wondering what this countertop is, I can take boiling hot pans, red hot pans, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's metal. It'll last way longer than I'm alive, so. Anyway, that's what I'm doing right now. I've got the pot of beans on, and I'm sitting in my chair. Y'all know that I don't walk very much, but I have walked this morning for the recipe, so I hope you can see that okay. This is my beans just boiling away. And I'm going to let them cook probably, maybe, uh, three to four hours at least. Now that they're simmering, I'll just keep them stirred every once in a while and go over and look at them and, and stir them around. And uh, I will add salt to it, but I won't do that until the last, until I can taste the beans and make sure the meat wasn't too salty. Uh, you can always add salt at the end. It's hard to take it out. There is some ways to take it out if you've got salted too much. But uh, anyway, as a rule of thumb, I just don't add salt. I, I put the bullion, in, and it's got it's it's ninety percent salt, I think. So uh, I'll bring you back later today when it gets finished on this, and I hope y'all have a wonderful day. 
the old dude. I'm out of here. Back for a quick visit. I had this leftover sausage. I was gonna put it back in the fridge and I thought, oh, this would be great for breakfast. So I've got my air fryer going. I've got it set on air fry at 400 degrees. If you can see this or not. And I set it for 10 minutes because I knew it would be a minute or so before I got it in there. Oh, let's see here. I've got it in a baking pan, the same pan I make biscuits in the air fryer with. It's rolling. I will bring you back here in just a few minutes. I'll bring you back in just a few minutes uh, when it's ready. All right, I'm back with you. Another cup of mud here. Uh, I set that on 10 minutes and air fry at 400 degrees. Let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah, they're cooking really good. I'll bring it out here and just, it should be cooked in three minutes, perfect. Just like it's roasted. It's early, I'll be fixing breakfast here pretty quick. Uh, these are air fryer biscuits that I made the other day. Yeah, they were from the can. I just wanted to see if you could put biscuits in the air fryer. I have a, a video that I will put up one of these days on how to make buttermilk biscuits. It'll have to be in a video all by itself though. Um, so we're gonna have biscuits, scrambled eggs with uh, veggies, asparagus spears and spinach and garlic that'll be a great breakfast uh, but that'll be about an hour or two from now i'm just trying to get all my cooking main stuff done out of the way right now while it's early and uh, if you've not seen my other videos you can go back i make cobblers and cakes and all kinds of stuff i started baking cakes when i was 10 years old won my first contest in 4-h argyle texas on a blue ribbon and uh, for a um, red velvet cake. My mother's recipe, but she did not help. I mean, I, I wanted to do it on my own. And I fell in uh, to the love of cooking at that point. My dad had already been teaching me how to cook outdoors. And so it was just a natural progression. Let me check these one more time. I don't want to burn them, but I do want some color on them. Oh yeah. Two minutes and I'll be done. You'll hear the you'll hear the warning that it's going off. It's ready. Anyway, I'm a big guy. I'm six foot two. And last October, I didn't realize this when I when I had my heart event and went in the hospital. I weighed 480 pounds. <clears throat> I've got some pictures of my legs when I was in the hospital that the doctor took. Uh, I won't share them. I just. They're, they're just too bad looking. But anyway, it looked like I was a burn victim. It looked like I had burns all over my legs. Uh, since October, early October, I came home in November at Thanksgiving. What a great Thanksgiving I had. And uh, I now it's uh, July, late July, and I weigh 314 pounds. So that's a lot in those few months. I can't exercise very much other than walk because I'm just learning to walk again. So it's not like I can get on the treadmill or go run or anything like that. I hope to be swimming here in a couple of months. Uh, that'll, that'll help me shed some more pounds. But I've always been a big guy. When, when I come out of the service, you would think that that would make you skin and bones. I went in at uh, 200 and came out at 220, just muscle. So. Um, Anyway, the bottom line is I don't eat all of this food that I make. I mean, yeah, the breakfast is fine, but uh, I can't afford, my heart can't afford to uh, go back to where I was, and I sure can't afford mentally or physically to weigh 480 pounds again. Um, it's getting ready to go off here. Let's see if it'll make my sound. <laughs> Give me time to get another drink. Of. That's 
the warning saying, hey, I just turned off. Let's get this out of here and see if it's, so you can see it here. Get my handy dandy trusty hook I made out of an old spatula. It has kept me from burning my fingers time and time again. Oh yeah. Lay this down here. Let's see. You can see they're ready. They're cooked. here. This is a multifunctional tool. That would actually be good just put on a hot dog bun with some relish and mustard. But it's going to be breakfast later on. Anyway, back to my story. So I continue to do well. My heart is okay. Uh, I'm a heart failure patient. I've been in heart failure for five years or so. And I know, I've known that for a long time. It's it's not getting any worse, so it's, it's holding my own. I just give out in the afternoons. Uh, that's why I get up in the mornings. I've got all this energy. And this morning, I actually walked for y'all for the first time in, in, a, in the video. So, anyway, I, I'm glad to be where I'm at. I don't know if you can tell it or not, but let's see here. Get you down here so uh, at one time you could literally let's see if you can see the old dude i'm in short so i mean i couldn't even get shoes on when i when i was before and now i've got kind of skinny bird legs but that's a good thing anyway i hope y'all have a good day I will bring y'all back later when the uh, pinot beans are ready this afternoon to take off. It'll be a slow deal. It, it, it's probably going to take four hours or so, or maybe not as many. I, I don't know. I'm in no rush. I'm retired. I, I've rushed around all my life. When I was nine or ten and we moved up to this country, I got up every morning, went and milked our cow. We had one cow. And once it was milked, I brought the milk to the house. I uh, walked about 300 yards, 400 yards to the house. Left there and walked to a dairy that was down the street about a quarter mile. And uh, everybody called her Aunt Betty. And she was actually my uncle's sister. Her name was Betty Fuller. And she had a dairy in Argyle. And I worked on that dairy for her for 15 cents an hour. I thought I was making some big time money. And uh, what I was doing was setting a setting something good in my life, getting up early and being responsible because she had to have me down there every day. My job was get the cows in, get their heads locked into a stall. At that time, there was a belt you put around the cow and there was a little, there was a pail. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what they call it. It's a milking pail. And uh, once the cows were locked in, you got the belt around the, the back in the middle of the cow, around, around their, I guess their, their waist by their teats, then uh, we took a germicidal uh, mixture. My job was to get those cows ready, uh, clean their teats. That's a nice way of, a nice way of putting it. And, uh, and then strip them, which meant uh, taking a, just a bucket uh, and go ahead and hand milk that cow for, oh, maybe, maybe 15 or 20 seconds on, on each tip to get the uh, milk out. Uh, there was cats there at the barn. They loved that because that's what we gave them. And uh, and then I would attach the milker uh, to that. And uh, once it was through milk and got all it was done, you could hear it change sounds. And I would go over, uh, undo, undo the milker off of her, get that pail and carry it into another room where the chiller was, which was a big old stainless steel vat that had refrigeration coils around it. And you poured the milk in there, and it was constantly churning. And uh, it kept the uh, cream from separating out. Because when the milk starts getting warm, the, the uh, cream will separate out of it. So that was my job. And I worked there many years. I, even after high school, I helped her when I had time. Uh, she was a great lady. Uh, 
but today, even now, I wake up about four o'clock every morning, um, eyes wide open, thinking about what I'm supposed to be doing today. And uh, it's a good thing because that's the only time I have energy now. That's <laughs> four or five or six. By the time noon rolls around, hopefully I've got everything done, uh, everything finished, and I can enjoy the rest of my afternoon just being the old dude maybe sipping another coffee, or probably by then, uh, drinking iced tea, sweet tea. Anyway, that's a little, little history on the old dude, if you've ever wondered. Uh, I'm doing okay. Uh, I, told, I told the surgeon not long ago, he said, because when I was in rehab, I couldn't walk. I could barely get in a wheelchair and I finally got in a wheelchair and then they got me on a walker and so I came home. Uh, they had ordered me a wheelchair uh, when I was in rehab and when I wheeled out of the room, I got this funny feeling. I thought, shit, they, th they think I'm gonna be in a wheelchair the rest of my life. I'm too damn young for this. I was 69 years old at that time. So, uh, I had been trying to step up one step in the rehab room, and I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't get my foot up there. And it seems so silly now, uh, because I'm walking, but I just couldn't do it. And uh, so I told the therapist that afternoon, he came down, I said, he was telling me what we were going to do the next morning. I said, hey, buddy, I said, can you come and get me early? I want to try those steps in the morning when I got some strength. He said, yeah, you think you could do it? I said, well, the only thing I can write, relate to is that when I was 11 years old, I, I went in and, and rode my first bull, Coppell, Texas. There was a rodeo there. Uh, my cousin was riding Bronx, and uh, a couple of uncles, my dad was there, and we were in the stands, and they were saying, I bet you won't go ride one of those old bulls. And I said, yeah, I will. I, mean, I was raised on a ranch by then. I, we were living on a ranch. And, we had hopped on our milk cows and our old bull, and of course they'd thrown us off, and you know, but but no bull rig or anything. And uh, I said, yeah, I bet I can. So my dad said, well, I'll pay your entry fee, and my uncle said, well, I'll give you five dollars, and if you, if you just ride. And uh, so uh, I had about fifteen dollars laying on, and, and I'm gonna tell you, in, in 1960, there was a lot of money. I mean, that was like a lot of money. So I went out, and uh, that's what I was telling them the uh, therapist, I said, for me to crawl over, and this bull was not a giant bull. They, they were junior bulls. They weighed about 1,200 pounds. And uh, I remember the bull. It was a black and white bramer, uh, nubby horns, and uh, it was kind of throwing a fit in, this, in that chute. Didn't want, to, didn't want anybody to mess with it. And it took every bit of strength that I could muster to crawl down in that chute to get on that bull. Mm. Sorry. Anyway, my uh, I told my therapist, I said, I want to go on those steps. I'm, I'm going to muster up that same energy, that same mindset to go up one step. So the next morning they came early, uh, picked me up, or came down and wheeled me down in my wheelchair. Um, I got up at the edge of the stairs. It was eight flights up. Uh, and then you could go down the other side. And I'd seen some people going up and down there. I mean, there was people in all different shapes. Knee, knee replacements, hip replacements, everybody was there, paralyzed people. So I gave my phone to the, another therapist. I told her to uh, video, I want to see myself take the one step. And I have a video of this. Uh, I don't know if I can, I don't know how to share it to Facebook. I'm not, uh, I'm not that good on this Facebook stuff. But anyway, if I can, I'll share it sometime. And I... I I was three weeks in. I had lost about 80 pounds. My clothes were falling off of me. But I got up there, and I made that step. I mean, it was like crawling out in a chute. And then I made another step and another step. Sorry. When you can't, when you've not been able to walk, it, it's a very emotional thing, even for an old dude. Dang. Anyway, uh, I went all the way to the top, and the therapist was walking around him. He said, oh, my God, I can't believe you did that. Just yesterday, you couldn't take one step. How did you do it? So I told him, I said, man, 
It's just a mindset. You just got to get in and do it. And I said, I wasn't worrying about going up the steps as much as I was worrying about falling back down on you when you were going to follow me up. He was a little big guy. I said, I'd have smushed you. He said, no, nah, I would have caught you. I said, well, let's go back down. So I turned around and went back down. And uh, be honest, I ain't never slowed down since. Oh, I called the guy with the wheelchair. It was being paid for by my insurance. I said, I don't need that wheelchair. And he said, why not? I said, I'm walking with, at that time, it was home. I was, I'm walking with a cane. I don't need a wheelchair. And within a couple of months, or a couple of three or four weeks, I was walking without the cane. I was walking across the room, not, not very far. Um, I got up out of my chair one day and left my cane there. My wife was sitting on the other side over there, and I walked over to the TV set. I said, did you see that? And she said, yeah, you're standing by the TV set. I said, yeah, but no cane, Mom. Look, no, no, just me. She said, oh, my God, you've walked on your own. I said, yeah. I mean, I, I was wiggly. It was like I had sea legs, but I was doing it getting it anyway. And, uh, anyway, a little about my history. Uh, my medical history goes back to, I think I broke my right arm twice. I've been shot twice. Uh, both accidents being shot once by a drunk buddy of mine and we'll talk about that sometime he's gone now but anyway um, broke a right leg riding a motorcycle hit a car doing about 60 miles an hour when I was uh, I think I was 15 I can't remember I was in high school I spent three months in a body cast that was a cast that went from my chest all the way down to my toes on my right side and my left leg was out and my arms were out so one whole summer, that happened the first day of summer, I was going to driver's ed. So I think I was 15. Uh, so at that point, uh, I spent the whole summer and the first couple of months of school in this cast. And it's funny, they, uh, they took that cast off. I went up to our local town at that time at, that before the hospital my doctor was, was, was Dr. Mac Adams in Texas. And he was an old army doctor. And he had a pretty rough exterior to him, but he, he was a good guy. He knew what he was doing. I mean, he put my leg back together and had pins and plates. And it was broke above the knee, compound fracture, below the knee, compound fracture. So he got up there and cut that cast off. He helped me set up on the side of the table. He handed me a pair of, of uh, crutches and said, all right, stand up. He said, but I'm going to warn you, you've been laying on your back so long, you're going to get really dizzy. Your equilibrium is going to be off. So I stood up and man, I felt like a drunk duck. Sat back down right quick and I tried it again and again and then walked out through the car. Funny, I didn't go to any physical therapy. My, my physical therapy was going and feeding the cows on crutches. Uh, I was on the football team. Uh, I, I had been every year, so going to the games on crutches and uh, just, you know, enjoying life, and pretty soon I was off the crutches and I was walking, no physical therapy, and I think now if you could do a paper cut or break your tip of your finger, they send you to physical therapy. Times have changed. Anyway, I'm out of here. I don't want to keep on babbling. I'll bring y'all back when the pinto beans are done. Y'all have a great day. Well, good morning again. It's been about three hours since I put my pot of beans on to cook. I'll show those boys. You're ready. Hope you can see this okay. Uh, you can always tell, of course, by tasting them. But you can see if they're soft. You can see they're really soft. And you need to taste them to see if they need seasoning. They don't need anything. So I'm going to turn this off. I've had them simmering for three hours now. As you see, I'm walking alone. I'm going back to sit down. I'm going to start breakfast pretty soon. Oh, let's see what time it is. It is 8.30. Anyway. I know I talked this morning about uh, my my health history and my heart event. My heart event was just my heart. One side was not talking to the other side. I didn't have a heart attack. It's just called a heart event. 
the myocardia something. And anyway, one side was not talking to the other. Uh, hopefully that's under control now. I've not had any more episodes. And I'm still losing weight a little bit at a time. Um, life is good. Retired, enjoying and what I love to do, cooking. Gonna be cooking breakfast here in a minute. I'm gonna chop up these asparagus spears and spinach, make some omelets out of those or maybe some just scrambled. So before I let you go, I have a Facebook page. It's called A Country Boy Can Cook, just like my YouTube page. Uh, when you go to look for it, put A Country Boy Can Cook Warnack, W-A-R-N-A-C-K. Um, there's a couple of people that have a country boy can cook Facebook pages or YouTubes, but if you put Warnack, it will show you, it'll direct you to my Facebook page. And if you'd like to join in, it's got videos, hundreds of recipes, uh, that all my friends have submitted to there. Just send me a note on this video saying, Hey, I sent you a, I sent you a friend re request on your Facebook page. And I will okay it. Uh, we don't allow any advertising unless it's somebody that is in the food service. I have a guy that uh, I share his food uh, when he uh, sells. He's got a barbecue place here in Louisville. It's called Sullivan's Old Town Bodego. It's a barbecue place. I went there the other night and had uh, the best catfish. Oh my God, it was great. Absolutely great. Uh, yeah, it's really good barbecue. And matter of fact, I've got about a quarter pound that he sent home the other day um, of some pulled pork. I'm going to have that with my scrambled eggs this morning, along with some sausage. So go to that. Uh, another one I've got my friends is, and he's on my Facebook page. It's Tierney's uh, Detroit Pizza here in Louisville. He's been voted one of the best in the country. And I, I knew him many years ago, probably 30 years ago so when we first met. We became friends. So anyway, I hope you have a great day. Go to my Facebook page, join in, say hello to me there. Send me a note on this one and saying, hey, I want to go to your Facebook page. And, and I've sent you a, a message and I'll make sure you get in. Have a great day and keep up the faith. Never give up. Just breakfast time, that's it. I cooked scrambled eggs, asparagus, and spinach, sauteed the asparagus and spinach with a little garlic and butter. About four eggs, good healthy breakfast. Great tasting. Full pork that I got from Sullivan's, Old Town Barbecue, Louisville, Texas. It's really good, I had a bite earlier. Sausage I cooked earlier in the air fryer. And biscuits. Biscuits cooked on top of the stove in a frying pan. Very good. It works great. So I'm going to dish up my breakfast here. Dish mine up. Uh, There's going to be some left over for sure. Let's see. Pulled pork is good any time of the day. Let's see here. And a couple of biscuits for good measure. Those are warm. I just put them out of the microwave. Get my wife's fix. She's just getting up, having her first cup of coffee. I've already had two of my trucker cups, my old cafe cups, which I love. And there's going to be enough for in the morning. I don't waste anything. I worked too many years to uh, 
too hard a labor. I've been self-employed most of my life, and uh, too many years of hard work to throw it away. Especially now that I'm in the age, I can enjoy it. All right, there's my wife's. Link sausage, scrambled eggs with spinach and asparagus. And the old dude eating good this morning. Full pork, scrambled eggs, asparagus, and spinach. Link sausage and air fry biscuits. No, sorry, not air fry. Uh, Stove top. Well, I hope you have a great day. And uh, I will see you on my next video. I'm going to have an upcoming video. Uh, I don't know if you see all my pictures that I post on, on my uh, um, YouTube page, but I posted a video story of my life not long ago and a bunch of pictures of cakes. And those are cakes that I made and I decorated. These big old ass hands can decorate cakes, but I haven't done one in four years. So I've got a couple to bake for some friends of mine and I'm gonna get my piping tools out. When I come by, they say, hey, hey, remember we're in here. So I'm gonna get them out and I'm gonna bake uh, my chocolate cake that's so yummy goody. And, uh, and I'm gonna decorate it. It's a devil's food chocolate cake. It's just simply out of this world with a milk uh, chocolate frosting buttercream. What's not to like about that? Anyway, Keep watching my videos and you'll see the video I put it. Maybe, maybe a couple, maybe a week or so, but I'll get it put up there whenever I do it. Have a great day. Thank you. Old dude out of here.